before I start, I wanted to mention that I actually started writing this speech last year. Uh, we ran out of time on the schedule in the spring, so I wasn't able to give it. Uh, and, I, and I understand why th that we wanted to have something about gratitude today, given that it's Thanksgiving. But I, I think it's important to know that, that really these are thoughts that I could have thought at any time. Uh, they were written before events that happened this summer or some of the discussions that happened this fall. Uh, I think that they're probably applicable in some of to some of those things. But to be honest, they weren't written directly in response to anything. It's just sort of my two cents. I want to thank Mrs. McLaughlin for doing that exercise for nothing else than just reminding nerves. All right. I know I teach oratory, but uh, it is absolutely something that happens to anyone who gets up here and speaks. And when I think about speaking, I wanted, before I even got to gratitude, I just wanted to start real quick with my first ever speech here at the Brooks School and something that happened to me. Uh, I was teaching science at the time, four sections of it, and I was really, really excited to get going. I was also a little bit nervous. I'd never gone to a school like this. I didn't really know much about it. Uh, I was a little bit intimidated. I was a little bit nervous, and I knew I really wanted to start off big. And so I thought, what better way than in my first class? All right, I am going to come out and just light their world on fire. All right, and, and, and my thought was, I'll do this with the greatest science pep talk that has ever been given. So I decided to wait outside my classroom. I didn't want them to even know who the new guy was. I'm sure they were wondering who the guy pacing up and down the hallway was, but they all kind of filtered in over time. And I waited till the bell rang. And then I sort of exploded in. And I hit him with exactly what I said, the greatest science pep talk ever. I started off talking about the joy of discovery, about the scientific process, about things like how energy and matter were going to be connected and how it all started at this big bang. And I knew I had them. I could see it in their faces. And I could see it in the face of a veteran teacher who was in the back of the room, Mrs. Stripling, who's no longer here, but who definitely I had her attention. And, and I think I caught by surprise. All right, the kids had like, looks of sort of shock and awe on their faces, and, and she did too. Uh, and I knew I had it. And she sort of sidled up, and I figured she was coming up to give me some sort of compliment or you know, maybe just acknowledge that there was a new science sheriff in town. All right. <laughs> and she leaned over, and as gently and softly as she could, she said, John, this isn't your class. <laughs> you're, you're in the wrong room. I think whatever happens today, this will go better than that. <laughs> I, I drink from a well I did not dig. I drink from a well that I did not dig. I love that quote. I'm going to come back to it in a minute, along with a challenge to all of you. But I think it's first, it's important to know how ridiculously fortunate I consider myself. I have an incredible family. I have wonderful friends. I have a challenging, fulfilling job surrounded by incredible people. I've been blessed with just about anything I could have asked for, other than maybe my hair. <laughs> when you hit the life lottery like I have, there's a danger of falling into a trap that thinking, of some, that thinking that somehow it's owed to you, that it's some sort of karmic payoff for something that you are or something you did. That's not to say I don't think I've earned some of what I have or that I feel bad about it. Just that I try to make sure to remind myself that it's not owed to me. The most insidious things in the world are the ones that are so ingrained in your mind that you don't even realize that they're there. They sneak up on you. They become these invisible prisons. We're blind to them, so we don't even realize we're being held captive in our own mental jail. So I try to be pretty intentional about reminding myself that I'm owed nothing to make sure that I don't start out thinking this way. Once, one way I try to do that is by practicing gratitude. Gratitude in the dictionary is said to be the quality of being thankful. And that's certainly a part of it. But I'm here to tell you that I don't think that's the whole story. There's something more. True gratitude is the antidote for selfishness. It's the kryptonite for narcissism and vanity and ego. It's the way you fight off entitlement. I'm talking about these things in their very broadest terms. Because the truth is, everyone in this chapel has been blessed with something. You see, if you practice gratitude, it's literally impossible to be self-centered. It's impossible to take things for granted. You'll never be convinced that the world revolves around you. Gratitude is totally based on others, appreciating others, supporting others, being thankful for others. It's really, really important to be thankful, and I'm incredibly thankful. I'm thankful to have a wife who's an amazing mother, who puts up with my crazy schedule and my terrible jokes who makes me want to be the best person I can be. She's my best friend, 
And I married way, way up out of my league. All right? I know. I know. Relationship goals, right? <laughs> she, she, even, she even came and surprised me today by sitting in the back. Right? Oh, yeah, I, I like that. I'm thankful for two kids who are healthy and happy and who come running up to say hi to me and hug with me every time they see me. More experienced parents tell me that this goes away at some point. So I'm going to enjoy it for as long as I can. Trust me when I tell you all that you have no idea how much your parents and guardians love you at this point. You can't until you become one yourself. So give those folks a break in every once in a while. I'm thankful I was raised by two parents who supported me enough to give me a ton of opportunities, who pushed back on me enough to make sure I learned humility early and often, and gave me the space to make decisions to learn how to fail every so often. I'm thankful for a little sister whose work ethic and determination uh, to make a difference dwarf my own. I'm thankful to work at a school with kids who play the guitar like Matt Salem, who do math like Coco Sun, who quietly lead with integrity like Hannah Latham, and who do whatever it is that Selmo does. <laughs> Brooke's students inspire me. I'm thankful to coach a team full of guys who work so hard toward their goals, and yet even more thankful that they care enough to check on their coach every so often when it's been a tough couple months. I'm thankful for working with a faculty that constantly amazes me with the depth of their passions. Last week, I went to a reception in New York City in an art gallery, and five minutes with Mrs. Graham told me and taught me more about art than anything I ever learned in school. I get the chance sometimes to sit and watch something like Coach Foley game plan for Governor's Academy, and then sit back and smile when I watch his team pull it off in front of me. I get to see people like Mr. Burbank work on a math problem with someone who may not love math, but is working really, really hard at it, or hear Mr. Hesse talk about the beauty of science and the world around us. I hear Mr. St. Cyr talk about the trees on campus. I'm thankful I meet so many people in this job that ultimately changed my life for the better. Like the kind of shy junior girl who walked up to me at a night football game four years ago and awkwardly asked to be the basketball team's manager. I said yes, but I had to go double check with another teacher to make sure that her name was Caroline. And I'm not going to try to capture what the trusty family means to me today. That's a whole nother speech for another time. All right? And I'd be lying if I said I had any clue at the time where it was all going to go from there. But I'm so thankful for what that whole family has meant to me. And whether it's the trusty sisters or Albert Nascimento, who spoke to you earlier this fall, or Jake Miller or Kevin Barry or Christine Jackson or Jake Scanlon, so many people have come into my life through my job. And they've all made me a better person. But here's the thing. While giving thanks like this is important, I'm here today to suggest that maybe it's not enough. That's not what gratitude really is. Now, I know this goes against the usual narrative of Thanksgiving. You've heard it since you were a little kid, I'm sure, right? It's right there in the word, Thanksgiving. It's a day for giving thanks, and it certainly is. Just watch a parent of a toddler sometime who's trying to teach them how to say thanks. What do they do? They hold out whatever they're giving them, but they hang on to it and say, what do you say, until it becomes second nature. And while I understand why they do it, I worry a bit sometimes thank you becomes what we just say and not what we're really thinking about. That it's this unconditioned response right, that comes out really before we have to consider what it means. Saying thank you shouldn't be subconscious. I am overrun each and every day by thank you letters and emails from kids that I've interviewed in admissions. And while I think, or at least I hope, that some of them are from the heart, I'm pretty sure more than a few are written under pressure from their parents. I think that's why I probably get the occasional one like I did this weekend that started. Dear Mr. McVeigh, thank you so much for interviewing me. I had such a great visit to Governor's Academy. <laughs> so I'm going to spare you the lecture on saying thanks today. I'm not going to tell you to write someone a thank you note, though it's always a nice thing to do, especially if you remember who you're writing it to. But I'm going to challenge you to do more than just say thanks. Let's go back to that quote I started with. I drink from a well I did not dig. I am overwhelmed thinking about how many wells had to be dug in order for me to get where I am right now. Just consider how I came to have this job. There are the folks who built this incredible school, going way back in the day to Frank D. Ashburn, all the way up to people like Mr. Chauvin and Dusty today. There are the people who sent their kids to school here, who gave their time and their resources to make this place happen. I think about how much my ancestors and relatives had to do, how hard they worked to provide opportunities to my parents 
who provided them in turn to me. I think about the adults in my life when I was growing up who shaped me and molded me and challenged me, and my friends who supported me. I think about the people who disagreed with me, sometimes helping me to see the other side of an issue, sometimes just helping me to see my own resolve, to come up with my own beliefs in myself and my own opinions. I think about the lucky breaks that I got that had nothing to do with me, but still let it happen. So I'm not here today to suggest that gratitude's just about suggesting, or sorry, that's just about recognizing and thanking the people who dug your wells. That's just the start. Gratitude's about action, not words. So your challenge today is to take up two jobs. First, it's to drink as deeply as possible from the wells that you've been dug. If you want to truly thank your teacher, don't write them a note. Invest totally in their class. If you appreciate the opportunities you've been provided here at Brooks, don't send Mr. Packard an email. Sink your teeth into everything about this place and make the most of all your opportunities. When teachers or advisors or coaches or dorm parents or anyone else gets frustrated around kids around here, more than anything else, it's because you're not making the most of your opportunities. It's why we don't question your grade in a class when there's a first class effort mark next to it. When we talk about the idea of engagement here, that's what we mean. It's about being committed to the very idea of this place, to being motivated to make the most of it. Your second job's even more important when it comes to gratitude. Gratitude is about digging more wells. It's about digging wells for other people. There are so many people in need of help. There are so many problems that need solving. I play basketball with this group of guys who span the entire spectrum of backgrounds and bank accounts and political views and racial identities. All right, they range from liberals to independents to conservatives and everything in between. And yet somehow over the years, there's become this common thread of helping others that runs through our group. It's almost like a positive peer pressure, a contest of sorts, to leave everything better than they found it. Helping others isn't a red state or a blue state thing. It's about getting in touch with your, your humanity. And it's something we can all agree on. Now, what are the wells that I've dug? What am I thinking about digging next? Well, I try not to be much of a self-promoter. And I certainly didn't come here to brag or boast about anything that I've done. Some of the wells have worked, some haven't. Most of them are still in progress. If I'm doing them the way I hope I am, then you know what they are. I'm a big believer that it's no use in walking anywhere to preach unless our walking is our preaching. And I'm sure as heck not going to tell you what wells you should dig. I'm just a tall, goofy, bald guy with a microphone. But I can tell you this about my wells. They mean something to me. It's been said that you should take action on the things that whisper to you. So I really try to listen to my brain and my heart and take on the things that matter to me. And I guarantee that every single one of us here in this chapel has a couple things in their mind that whisper to them. That means something a little more and a little extra. A person who's helped us or a problem that we think needs solving or a cause that hits really close to home. All of us can help someone else. Don't get fooled into thinking it's always about those with more, always giving to more, those with less. It's not about what you have right now. It's about just being a person for others. It's about shining a light into darkness. Don't just say thank you to the folks in the dining hall. Pick up a left behind plate so they don't have to. Better yet, don't leave the plate behind at all. Don't just give money for dress down day. Learn about the cause. Give your time and energy as well as your $3. That's what's so inspiring about seeing this. It's action. At the end of last school year, I saw an incredible act like this play out right here on campus. Will Collins was a senior last year, and honestly, not someone I knew all that well. I happened to walk out by the farm towards the end of school. It was a community service day that our seniors were doing, and a bunch of seniors were helping out on the farm. I happened to notice Will doing tougher and harder manual labor than any Brooks student I'd ever seen. He was dragging heavy objects through the dirt, digging up the land, give, uh, right, and doing really what was ever, whatever was needed on the farm. Other kids were stopping. They'd give up or find some shade for a quick conversation with friends, but not Will. He was relentless. He was possessed in a way that I'd actually never seen him on this campus. So I walked over to him and I said, what's up? He just answered, I heard about Joanne's husband. For those of you who weren't here last year, the woman, Joanne, who runs our farm, had, tragi had tragically just had her husband pass away while he was working in the field. Will continued on. She's such a nice lady. I know she's really hurting. 
With all she's been dealing with, the farm f has fallen behind. I decided I'm going to catch her up. And with that simple statement, he walked away to keep building his section of the fence. I decided I'm going to help catch her up. When you find a cause that means that much to you, you'll know it. You won't get as tired. You won't get frustrated. You won't even notice how long it takes or how hard it is or what it takes you away from. You'll just make a decision like Will did, and you won't stop till you make a difference. The wells we dig define us. They have meaning. They show who we are. They show what we stand for. They show what we'll pass along to others after we're gone. I challenge you, all of you, to listen to those whispers in your head, to keep your eyes open to find a way to make a difference. You'll find an energy and a power and a drive inside you that you never knew was there, and we'll all be better off for it. I appreciate you giving me a bit of time and attention today. I hope you take my challenge. Have a great Thanksgiving. You've earned this break. Enjoy time with family and friends. And then, let's get digging.